Get ready for the morning rush. A quick wrap of your news and weather. We'll start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. High pressure and control. So we have nothing but sunshine expected across the entire state today. Winds will be light here in the metro about 5 to 15, a little bit on the stronger side, about 10 to 20 across the eastern plains with warmer temperatures statewide. Crystal? We turn out to some overnight news this morning. Authorities are now trying to figure out what led to a deadly shooting at a mosque in Canada. Mosque officials say a gunman opened fire on about 40 worshipers during evening prayer Sunday night in Quebec City. Six people were killed, eight others injured this morning. What Canada's prime minister is now calling a terror attack. At least two people have reportedly been arrested in connection with this attack. A Carlsbad city councilor will not be heading to his day job this morning. J.R. Deporta reportedly fired from the Holly Frontier refinery, but remains a city councilor. This after getting into hot water after posting a controversial Facebook comment last week about women's rights. Deporto apologized at a city council meeting, but a number of local groups are calling for his resignation, including the Eddy County Democratic Party. On to news happening today, a debate over fluoride in Durango. The city council there wants to know whether residents want it in their drinking water. There's a public hearing over the ordinance at 5 in City Hall Council Chambers today. You can also watch on Durango Government TV. The meeting is in preparation for the April election. Delta Airlines is back to full operation this morning and flights are in the air after the airline experienced a major computer outage yesterday. Delta was forced to ground all of its domestic flights, but flights were all, uh, that were already in the air were not affected. This is the second such nationwide shutdown by Delta in the past six months. David? The groundbreaking on a new building for UNM's Anderson School of Management is set for 11 this morning. The nearly $25 million facility will provide about 60,000 square feet of space. This will give the school about eight new classrooms altogether. Now, working labs also included, as well as a new space for study groups. Remains of the demolished old 50-year-old structure were cleared out last week for today's ceremony. Part of the tab for construction comes from longtime UNM supporters Ian McKinnon and his wife. The new building will be named for them. Crystal? On to news happening right now. For nearly two months, there will be a pecan tree quarantine in four different cities. The State Department of Ag imposed a 60-day quarantine that restricts movement of pecan trees in Clovis, Roswell, Hobbs, and in Artesia. It aims to protect the pecan industry from an insect pest called the pecan weevil. Early detection can prevent the pecan weevil from becoming established elsewhere. The nation's only underground nuclear waste repository is one step closer this morning to becoming fully operational. The waste isolation pilot plant near Carlsbad resumed operations last month after a radiation leak forced its shutdown in 2014. The current Argus reports the U.S. Department of Energy has now resolved five of the remaining 15 corrections that need to be made after reopening. Today's Metro Threat Index added to not a whole lot going on as far as the weather goes here in New Mexico. We're pretty chilly out there this morning with highs are in the 50s this afternoon. So once we get past those 20s out there now, we're golden. But as far as the overall setup goes, nothing but sunshine and warmer temperatures on the way. Crystal? New at 6, New Mexico True Ads will be put on the back burner as the state's budget crisis continues this morning. The ads put the state's culture, people, and natural resources in the spotlight. But according to the tourism secretary, there is no money to extend the campaign to new markets. The ads are on billboards, in print, and on social media in Dallas, Houston, Denver, San Diego, Chicago, New York, and even in Austin. Big milestone for Volkswagen today. It's now the world's biggest automaker bouncing back from its emissions cheating scandal. Volkswagen says it sold 10.3 million vehicles last year, overtaking Toyota, which sold 10.2 million vehicles in 2016. Okay, here's your interesting news of the day. The age-old practice of swaddling babies is being turned into a therapy for adults in Tokyo. That's right, for adults. Women take turns tying each other in a large cloth from head to toe and in a cross-leg position, swaying slightly from side to side after being laid gently on their backs. This is in hopes of helping, helping rather loosening muscles and bones. The practice is used to alleviate posture and stiffness, mostly after giving birth. You may notice a line waiting for pickups at Starbucks this morning. The company says more people are placing orders and paying through the mobile app, causing bottlenecks at areas where people pick up their drinks. Starbucks says that congestion is giving other customers a little anxiety, so they may leave without buying anything. Coffee chain says that's one reason far slower than expected sale for far slower than expected sales in the last quarter. Oh no. All right, listen to this. Barcelona is a popular place, right? Uh, maybe too popular to visit, though. Local residents have complained they are outnumbered by roughly 32 million visitors every single year. The city council now passed new regulations, including a freeze on building new hotels in certain areas and even a cap on private home rentals.
Time now for a check on that Monday morning commute. No major instance to slow you down at this point. We're moving at posted speeds across the entire metro area. We'll let you know if anything pops up throughout the morning. Adam artists from around the world are waking up in Colorado this morning, hosting tourists coming in just to see their elaborate snow sculptures. Each team is given a 20 ton block of snow. They get more than 60 hours to create a masterpiece. Over the weekend, China took first place in the competition there. Those sculptures are on display now through Sunday. Wow, that's spectacular. Okay, under this, several stars have a new trophy this morning. Denzel Washington, Emma Stone, Mahershala Ali, Viola Davis, and the cast of Hidden Figures took the film awards last night at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Well, the top TV awards went to the cast of Orange is the New Black and Stranger Things. Some say the SAG Awards are considered an indicator of success at the Academy Awards. Mm. So congratulations yeah. to all of them. Look how excited they are. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, time now for the five facts. We start with number five. A lot of people are talking about this. We're talking about the dressing disaster. This after Dion's announced it will be stopping production on its dressings while it upgrades its production facility. We're here to calm your fears this morning, though. Dion says they will bring back all of their dressings in just a few weeks. However, that has not stopped people from going to extremes to get their Dion's Ranch dressing fix. Ads on Facebook and Craigslist have the ranch listed from about 250 to even $500. <laughs> That's pretty That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> on to number four, good news. Just into our newsroom this morning, the silver alert for a once missing elderly Albuquerque woman is now canceled. APD says 78 year old Helen Lucero took her dog for a walk around 11 yesterday morning near Candelaria in Pennsylvania. She suffered from dementia, suffers from dementia. Police say that Helen and her dog, though, have been found safe. At number three, warmer temperatures across the state now about five degrees above average into this afternoon at 54. As far as the outlook goes, get used to the sunshine. It's here to stay this week with temperatures continuing to climb all the way through Thursday. On to number two this morning, still no word on whether Mexico's president will accept an invitation to speak at our state house this session. Democratic representatives Bill McCamley, Javier Martinez, and Angelica Rubio sent a letter to President Enrique Peña Nieto on Friday after Nieto recently canceled a meeting with President Trump over the border wall controversy. On to number one now. Today, some House and Senate Democrats will gather on the steps of the Supreme Court to demand that President Donald Trump withdraw his executive order banning refugees from seven Muslim Middle East countries from entering the U.S. It sparked protests at airports across the country, including at the Suncourt yesterday. Demonstrations at major airports are expected to continue this morning. That's where immigration lawyers are expected to once again be camped out, helping immigrants and refugees still stuck in limbo. In the meantime, President Trump is defending his order, saying it's not about religion, adding that it's about the safety of the country. If you need more on this, go to our website, krqe.com.